Hi, welcome to chapter one of BUS 441 Strategic Management. Let's review our learning goals today. Today we want to understand the uh, benefits of strategic management, explain globalization, environmental, sustainability, uh, and their influences in strategic choices and strategic management, and understand the basic models of strategic management and its components. Now this first chapter is just really an overview or strategy and many of these concepts I'm talking about today we'll get into more detail later on. We're also going to talk about common triggering effects for changes in strategic management uh, or strategic decisions, understanding different modes of strategic decision making and using strategic audits as a method of analyzing corporate functions and activities. So strategic management is just basically a a name for the decisions management make to hopefully improve the, the long-term performance of a company. Now, strategic management can include internal and external environment scanning, strategy formulation, strategy implementation, and evaluation control. Each of these areas we're going to talk about in more detail on a later slide. Here are the four phases of strategic management. One is the basic financial planning. Two, forecasting uh, based planning. Three, external oriented, externally oriented strategic planning. And four, strategic management. So that's the four phases. And we'll talk more in depth of each of these phases in the following slide. Now, what are the benefits of a strategic management or good strategic management? It's really, we're really looking for a company to find its place in the world. And we want to, uh, figure out what is the best way for the company to fit into its environment and its strategy that, and, and the structure that it's going to uh, work with to hopefully produce enhanced company performance, namely maximizing shareholder profits. And strategic planning is important because as the environment becomes more fast changing fast-paced environment, companies need to react quicker to these changes to remain competitive. Now, having good strategic management can give companies a better strategic vision for what the firm is and what they're trying to do. Ho hopefully bring into a clearer focus strategically what's important to the company and make sense of the ever-changing landscape of competition. Now, a big big, big part of strategic management these days is recognizing the effect of globalization. How are we going to integrate our company globally into international markets and compete against international corporations? Um, and this is a, it's nothing new. However, globalization is becoming more and more a bigger piece of companies' total demand and total production. So it, it's not just the continental United States that companies have to worry about, it's the larger world in general. And that is taking shape. Like I was saying, innovation is an important part of the strategic management of companies these days. So companies need to look for, constantly look for improvements in their products and services, the way the company's organized, how they connect it to customers, and they need to find innovative approaches or at least, at least be competitive with other companies' innovations that be relevant. So this is what, in our new world of business, innovation is really key to maintaining costs, improving profits, and increasing market share, or entering or creating new businesses. Sustainability is another important aspect of strategic management. And it's really using business practices to maintain what they're now referring to as a triple bottom line. So this triple bottom line involves three things. It's, of course, the, the, the original bottom line, which is you know, maximizing profits. That's still there. But we, now we have an additional bottom line of also managing the company's social responsibility and also managing the company's environmental responsibility as well. So now companies are, are formulating strategies that are going to not only maximize profits, but also maximize the way the company handles its social and, and environmental responsibilities as well. Now, 
there are a couple of theories that we're going to dive into um, on the organizational adoption. Um, one is this population theory where we're going to look at the successfulness of establishing a particular environmental uh, niche. Um, and then the institutional theory, which is going to look at um, the way organizations do and, and can adopt to changing conditions, uh, imitated by successful other successful organizations. So companies have to have companies have a choice strategically. So their perception is going to be not only about how they adapt to changing environments, how they adapt to innovation, um, but also they also have to look at the opportunity and the power to read and shape their environment in total. And these are this is something we're going to expand upon uh, later on in, in many other chapters throughout this whole course. Now, the organizational learning theory. Um, this, this is an interesting theory actually. Here we're going to look at how um, learning organizations are skilled at generally four main activities. Solving problems systematically, experimenting with new approaches, learning from their own experiences and past history as well as from experiences of others and other competitors, and transferring knowledge quickly and efficiently throughout the organization. And this, again, we'll elaborate on in future um, lectures as well. Now, strategic flexibility, this is something that companies need to be very flexible in the ability to adapt and shift in a change, changing landscape of competition. So in, you know, in a long-term commitment to developing um, and utilizing critical resources, the company has to remain flexible and able to take advantage of these changing aspects of the business world and of their industries altogether. And a learning organization, you know, following that outline I was talking about before, helps companies become more flexible and to take better advantage of, of these changes. Okay. So this is more on the learning organization that we were talking about before. Um, it's just, you know, it's important to realize that the critical component for a company to remain competitive is that they have to have, they can't be fixed in their ways is what this is trying to say. When it, we're saying a learning organization, what we're really saying is that the, the organization has the ability to be open-minded and adapt to changing times and changing circumstances and to, to, to figure out the, the knowledge that they need to understand and modify it in a way that's going to provide new knowledge and new insights and new profit uh, uh, making ventures for the company. So it's really about, this is how it ties in with flexibility, that companies have to be able to um, accept change. It's really all about recognizing, accepting change, and profiting from the change. Now here are the, actually I talked about these four skills areas before, but this again is just saying that, you know, um, learning organizations are good at, you know, identifying problems, either having a systematic approach to solving them or experimenting with new approaches to solve older problems. Um, you know, just keeping in, in touch with their past experiences throughout history and being able to transfer this knowledge through the organization effectively to make the changes they need to get to where they want to be. Now, strategic management it consists of four basic elements. Environmental scanning, strategic formulation, strategic implementation, evaluation, and control. Um, and this is basically a four-step um, process that keeps going around and around and around. You know, so as far as we come up with a new um, idea, sometimes it has to go through this process again. So it's a continuous improvement effort by co by corporations following this strategic process. Now, in the you know this here's a model where in the, the first step that we were talking about is this environmental scanning. You know, which is, let's see, do I have a, okay, that's actually coming up. So this is just the graphic. I'm going to talk about each of these areas individually, but we have our environmental scanning that leads to a strategic formulation that leads to the implementation of those ideas, and then the evaluation and control, which is basically saying environmental scanning, we find what the problem is, formulate a strategy on how to solve it, 
and actually do the strategy, that's the implementation, and then review if it worked or not and if there's need, any changes need to be, take place. Okay. So the environmental scanning, you know, here scanning is the monitoring, evaluating, and disseminating of information from the external and internal environments to key people within the, within the organization. You know, and its purpose is to identify strategic factors, those external and internal elements that will assist in the analysis and deciding the strategic decisions for the corporation. And a, a very simple way of, of doing this is to do what's called a SWOT analysis, which is um, looking at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So the external environment is mostly, here's the environment here. So the external environment is mostly looking at opportunities and threats, and the internal environment is looking at mostly strengths and weaknesses. So here's, here's a, a chart basically looking at, if we were, were to put uh, the environment together in a graph, we could have in the middle, in the core, would be the internal environment, in the company, its culture, its structure, its resources. Then we could have a task environment, which would be the industry, and, the, and everything that the industry faces, from government regulations to shareholders, suppliers, customers, creditors, uh, trade associations, labor unions. And then we have the, so, the uh, more of a social environment or external environment, which would be the, the social, cultural forces, economic forces, technological, and political legal forces. So this could be looked at as a total environment that the company operates within. Okay, so the next step is taking all this information from the environmental scanning and figuring out a way to, to put it into a formal uh, strategic plan. So the strategic formulation, you know, it's a process of investigating um, analysis and decision making that provides a company with the criteria for attaining a competitive advantage. It includes defining the competitive advantages. Uh, for, for the business strategy and crafting corporate mission and, specific, and specifying uh, achievable objectives and setting uh, policy guidelines. So basically what we're talking about here is we're coming up with ideas on how we're going to run a company. We're coming up with an idea and a process of strategically where we want to go as a company and how we're going to get there. So it's a pretty big deal of how to, you know, of putting this, this strategy together and it needs to be done you know, in a routine, routine fashion, because it's sort of basically a plan. The strategic formulation is just coming up with a plan to achieve the company's objectives. Now, in this plan, we basically have to have a mission. So a mission is really, why is the company here? What are we here to do? And the vision is sort of like, what do we want to become? Where are we going? And the objectives are what we want to accomplish as part of this mission and vision, what you know, what are we looking to get done? So that all needs to be in the, the strategic plan. <clears throat> so it's really a master plan, a master list of um, how we're going to achieve our mission and, and objectives, and, it, and it, it's going to hopefully maximize what we're good at, what we call competitive advantages, and minimize what we're bad at. You know, and in, in, the, in, the, in the company, in the industry, in the environment, we're going to formulate a strategy that's really going to make the best of what we have and hopefully maximize our profits as a company. You know, so uh, overall corporate strategy is the, the larger box we're fitting in. And inside that box, we have our business strategy. Now, if, you know, when we talk about, you know, these different, these different areas, you know, the corporate strategy this is really describes the company's overall direction in terms of general attitude towards growth and the management of various businesses and product lines. Um, you know, and, it, and it's going to really think about sustainability, growth uh, of the company. Now, the, the smaller box, the business strategy, this is where this occurs at the business unit or, or product level, and it's going to emphasize um, the improvement of the competitiveness of these products, of the you know or services, it's, you know, inside the specific industry that the company, th those products are operating in, or market segment, however you want to call it, that's going to be served by those business units. Uh, business strategy may fit uh, within two overall category categories, you know, competitive and cooperative strategies. So it's really just breaking the company down to its business areas and formulating a strategy for each of those business areas. 
Now, the functional strategy is approach taken by the functional area to achieve corporate and business unit objectives. So we could take the, you know, the business strategy, because you think of it sort of as a business unit, and we could, we could break down the business unit into functional areas and then achieve corporate and business goals within those units. Uh, so we're looking for strategies to maximize the resources down to uh, these functional units which exist within the business area. So really it's just sort of taking the strategy and making, put it in a hierarchy. So what's the overall strategy, then the strategy for the business unit, then the strat uh, for the business area, then the strategy down to the business unit. So, okay. Um, now policy, we're looking at this, again these are basic topics, so policy you know, it is going to be a guideline for you know decision making that's going to link the formulation of the, the strategy in the company with the implementation. So basically, you have a strategy, but now you need a policy or procedure of how you're going to implement that strategy to make it real, to make it come to life. Um, so companies are going to use these policies to make sure that employees throughout the business. Uh, make decisions and take actions that support the company's mission, objectives, and overall strategy. You know, which is you know a good way of doing it. Okay. Now the strategic implementation, again here, you know, this is a process by which, uh, of course, strategies and and concepts and ideas that they want to they want to have as part of their overall goals are put into action through the development of programs, budgets, and procedures. So they're going to take the strategic overall strategic ideas and break it down to smaller bits that the company can digest. Um, so this process may involve changes within the overall culture, structure, or management of the company. Uh, you know the entire organization. So this is just formulating a plan to take the strategy and make sure that it gets done. Now the evaluation and control is reviewing the, the strategic, the strategy and the implementation and seeing if it worked. So it, it's a process where we're going to do a performance review and look at how the strategies actually perform compared to what we wanted. So we're going to basically say, okay, we, put our, we got, came up with the strategy, we implemented it, we controlled it through procedures and policies and budgets, and now we're going to take a step back and look, did it really work? We're going to evaluate the effectiveness, uh, and hopefully we can come up with some sort of rationale for the performance uh, at the end of all these activities. So, you know, was the implementation successful? Did the implementation result in better, uh, in achieving the objectives of the strategic plan? So it's going to include the actual outcomes of the strategic management process, and the you know, practice of strategic management is, is justified in terms of the ability to improve the organizational overall performance and profitability um, and the return of investments to, to, to investors. Okay. So this is basically you know, the performance that I was talking about before. It's just categorizing the results. And the feedback learning process would be the part in which we're going to learn from our mistakes and hopefully revise and correct them and, and slightly change the strategy moving forward to make it more effective. Okay. Now there could be what's called these triggering events and a triggering event is something that is going to act as a catalyst to produce or force some sort of change within the organization. And some of these things that are quite common could be, you know, of course, some new CEO, CFO or new top management, some sort of um, external intervention which is, you know, a, a firm's bank, as an example, firm's bank suddenly ref refuses to approve a new loan or demands payment of an old loan. It could be, you know, something related to stock investors. Uh, um, it could be a hostile takeover, things of that nature. A uh, threat of change of ownership, and this could be uh, not a hostile takeover, uh, but a takeover, a merger acquisition with another company. Um, a performance gap, which is a gap that exists between the performance, when performance does not meet the expectations of the company. So if sales or profits are down, they may have to look at realigning or rethinking their strategy. And just a, creating a inflection point, which basically a point at which um, the company may introduce a new direction, a new type of technology. Uh, there's a different environment that may occur a change in the overall, uh, one of the overall 
uh, basic concepts of the industry, and that could be a, a point of, of change for the strategic plan. Okay, so strategic decisions, the, um, what, what makes a decision specifically strategic? Well, it could be a rare decision, um, something that's usually not, is not that typical, or may, may have never happened before. It could be um, consequential, which is a decision uh, that's going to demand a lot of resources, a commitment, a high level of commitment for the employees of the company, or it could be a directive, some strategic set of um, decisions that are going to affect future actions of the company. So it could be a directive moving in a new direction, taking a new bold approach. Again, this slide is just describing what I just described, so I'm going to move forward. Okay, so let's move on to uh, modes of strategic decision making. So there are different modes. Let's see. Let's make sure those are. There are different modes, and so this is this guy uh, came up with this. And let's just describe each of them a little bit here. There could be the entrepreneurial mode, and this is, you know, this is sort of the power of the individual, and, and the focus is on opportunities that that have more uh, entrepreneurial in nature. So, the, giving employees of the company the ability, or having a strategic goal that allows people the company to be more entrepreneurial. Sort of like a good example could be uh, Google allows. Um, their employees to spend a certain amount of time on pet product projects and that's how actually how things like Gmail were developed where it wasn't really part of the company's strategy but the company had a strategy of allowing employees to spend a certain amount of time on individual entrepreneurial type of projects that you know if they actually work out or they get a lot of progress on can become big components of the company's um, products or services like Gmail with Google and also uh, the post-it notes with 3M, that was another company that allows time for, for employees to work on more entrepreneurial type of projects that aren't within their direct um, obligations. And this way, they are free to be a little bit more, you get a little bit more innovative creativity spirit in there. And those, those entrepreneurial initiatives need to have a strategy to make sure that employees aren't cut off from um, being creative. There's the adaptive mode. Uh, and it refers to um, what the book may refer to as a muddling through or the decision making mode that characterizes a uh, reactive solution to existing problems um, rather than a proactive. So, so you're not really searching for new opportunities, you're sort of you're recognizing a problem and you're more so adapting to compensate for it and it's not like um, a huge change. Um, it's more of an incremental or smaller change. There's also the planning mode, which is, the, which is a decision-making mode that involves a systematic gathering of information for an analysis. And it's a generation of alternative strategies and, the, the ra and a rational selection of what's most appropriate. So it's a more formal, a more um, systematic approach to decision-making where you're going to sort of like, here's a classic example, you're going to make a list and on one side the pros and one side the consequences and then figure out what's the best way to decision to make. And then there could be, you know, a logical incrementalism and this is a fourth decision-making mode which can be viewed as sort of um, a pulling together of the planning, the um, adapting and to a lesser extent the op entrepreneurship modes. So pulling these three modes together and at, in, in, at a top management level, so they have a clear idea of the mission and the objective. So, so it's sort of like taking a step back, looking at everything that's available, and developing strategies, um, hopefully to choose, you know, using like an interactive process in which the organization probes the future experiments and learns from a series of, you know, incremental commitments, and rather than um, you know, trying to learn from all these other adaptive modes in one master mode, sort of, uh, to, to talk about. Uh, and although the, the mission and the objectives are set, the strategy allows to emerge, you know, out of the debate and discussions and experimentations, changes in the decision making. So these are just sort of 
trying to put labels on the different modalities of decision making within inside a company. Now, if you wanted to have um, a decision making process, this eight step, these eight steps sort of out, outline a, a decision making process, not, not that every company uses, but companies in some form or another using a variation of this decision making process. So this is really just sort of a boiled down approach and it basically says, you know, evaluate the current performance results. Is the company doing well or is it not doing well? And then review the corporate governance. Is the, is the corporation being run according to the strategy? Is it being properly implemented? And then do a scan and assess the external environment. Has something changed outside of the company? Then do the same thing with the internal corporate environment. Has something changed significantly inside the company? And then conduct a SWOT analysis, which is going to pull together the external and internal strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Then use this information to generate and select the best alternative strategy for the company. Implement the strategy, and then evaluate the effectiveness. So just sort of, if you want to lay out an eight-step method for decision making. And this could be, this is a sort of a graphical representation of um, strategic formulation using steps one through six, and then seven to eight at the end of it. Okay. So a strategic audit um, is quite common and what we're trying to do here is we want to pull together um, questions by each area and each issue to hopefully um, put together analysis that can be made um, from various corporate functions and activities. It, you know, so beginning with the evaluation of the current performance, the audit can you know can continue with the environmental scanning, the strategy, the formulation and a strategic implementation. So this is really just talking about going back after you've made the strategy implemented, going back and just sort of rethinking everything. Did we make the right, is there a breakdown anywhere in our strategic, and we're looking at these, these eight steps back here. The strategic audit is just gonna go through these eight steps again and try to figure out, you know, if, did we miss something or can we improve something moving forward? Okay. so. That is the end of chapter one. And remember, chapter one is really just an introduction to the course. So we covered a lot of concepts, but they're going to be reinforced in later chapters and described in a much greater detail. So the only, the real concept of this chapter one is just to say that if you want the big picture of chapter one here, the idea is companies need a strategy and companies need to think about who they are and where they're going. Now, since companies comprise many people, they have to have a more systematic approach to, to establishing their strategy, um, deciding who's going to help implement it and work on it and who's responsible for what, then reevaluating and evaluating their performance. So companies don't work like individuals where you probably have a personal strategy and you know what you need to do each day to kind of accomplish your goals. So as a person, you have goals, maybe to finish school, get a job, you know, um, have a successful, you know, have a successful career beyond just having a job, being a, having a successful, a successful career, and, you know, things like that. So these are your your goals and your strategy is, you know, how are you going to how are you going to get there? So you're in school, so that's part of your strategy. If you're taking your your strategy one class at a time, so companies, you could do that without having to write anything down on a piece of paper or having not really having to make a PowerPoint or, or have a meeting with anybody. You can make your own strategy as an individual. And it's very informal, but companies need to be much more formal. So this whole strategic uh, chapter one is really describing how companies make a more formal, formalized process for thinking about their strategy, putting it down on paper, communicating it to shareholders, owners, and employees, customers, and vendors. In, in, you know, in, in a way that's going to make a clear understanding of what this company is here for, what they're trying to do, and how they're going to measure success. And that's all chapter one is really talking about, although it throws a lot of terminologies around and big concepts, but the bottom line is really just, hey, companies need, need, need to have a formal process for developing and implementing a strategy to help maintain and improve success and profitability in the future. Okay. So later chapters will cover more content and be a little bit more involved. Remember, this is just an introductory chapter. Um, and I look forward to talking to you soon for chapter two. Thank you.